just want to take time and just worship the Lord. So if you like, you can have a seat and just worship with us. We're going to lift up his name. We come to glorify you, Jesus. shout of praise hallelujah we just want to cover the earth with worship and praise to him oh you reign lord forever
God, you reign. Oh God, that you reign in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Oh Father God, that we continue, Lord Jesus, in this path that you have led us to, Father God. You reign, Lord Jesus. Oh Father God, that you take control. Take control, Father God, of who we are and what we do, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we want to continue just to move forward, Lord God. Lord Jesus, that you continue to guide our steps, Lord God. That you take us where you want us to be, Father. That we allow ourselves to be led by you, Jesus. Father God, that we can see clarity, Lord Jesus. That we can be transparent, Lord God. We want to move, Lord Jesus, when you tell us to move, God. Oh, you reign forever, Jesus. Oh, we glorify your name, God. Oh, there is no one like you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord.
Good morning, everyone. Or good morning slash afternoon. How's everyone doing today? Good. Need a little louder. How's everyone doing today? Great. All right. Amen. I just want to thank everyone for joining us here today. I'm glad you guys came. I hope you're having an amazing Sunday, too. And I also want to thank everyone online that's joining us here today. Um, whether it's, you know, your longtime viewer or it's your first time seeing this or you just couldn't make it here today, thank you. Um, so I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Amen. I like to, there are 15 minutes of prayer before service every Sunday. So if you guys want to have like a one-on-one -on -one talk with God, get into his presence before service, I encourage you guys to get up off your seats and come join us at the altar. You know, the website has a lot of stuff to do on But if you miss Sunday's service, go to newlightpilson.com, click the media link, and press any type of sermon that you just missed. <laughs> nah. Oh my gosh. No, we didn't. Yo, this stuff right here is crazy. But if you guys really want to know what's going on in the Bible, I encourage you guys to come on Mondays to Sergio Ramirez with this Bible study group at 7 30 p.m. But if you can't make it, there's one on Wednesdays too. What's up with our reading world at 7 30 p.m.? But also, young people, it's on Fridays, 7 30 p.m. Second and fourth Saturday of the month, we have at home internet prayer with Pastor Rod at 6 30 a.m. So come on and pray with us. You know, we do actually teach people how to preach every Saturday at 8 30 a.m. It's all we're doing in my So come out and we'll teach you. Pops, what are you doing? We need to go to church. Go to church. It's not for the love today. What? What's today? Sunday. I know, that's why we need to go to church. Okay, but today's the 20th. What does that mean? Community service today? Oh! That's how that works. I get it. I get it. I'm going back to bed. Yeah, you do that. So, 23rd of this month, we'll be having our community service at 11 a.m. So, come on and join us. If you want your tax forms from the church, just send it to the member login and download it straight to your device. That's, that was uh, our announcements brought to you by House Meeting. <laughs> she did a good job, right? Um, just a couple of reminders while you're getting your tithes and your offerings ready. Um, our one by one cards are still out there. Um, so if you need one, um, speak to Odalia, our usher, and she can get one for you. Um, so very simple, write five names down, five simple instructions on winning five friends to the Lord this year. Also, um, on March 1st at 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., um, um, Lisette is doing a, a, a thing called Women Workout Session, Restoration of My Temple. Amen. So just for women only, Jesus, I'm talking to you. Women only, bro. Um, just come out, women, have a good time, learn more about exercising, eating right, and uh, just a better, a better you for this year. Amen. 15 minutes after the service starts, we'll be locking the doors in the front, okay, for the safety of the children that are having um, worship, okay? So as soon as you come in, just drop your children off in the back. You don't have to worry about them. They're having their own worship service, service and you can worship up here with us. Um, Matt is the epic youth leader. He's looking for help on Friday nights. Adults, leaders, if you went through um, the leadership program last year, please, we're looking for leaders to help out eyes. We're looking for a van driver that can help out this Friday. So if anyone's free, um, anyone's going to celebrate Valentine's Day on Saturday, um, please help us out on Friday. For more information on that, you can see Matt um, with Epic Youth. 
um, which are tithes and your offerings in your hands. Everyone can stand up. We want to welcome any single visitor that's here today. I know um, Jade is in the back. Everyone say hi, Jade. Amen. Let's give it up for her. Any other visitor, we want you to feel welcome. And this is the house of the Lord. Make it your home. Please come back next week. Um, and let's pray for our tithes and our offerings and our one-by-one -one cards. Father, we present to you our one-by-one -one cards. We present every name that's on this list, oh Lord. Father, you move and you have your way, oh Lord. We thank you for everything that you're doing, every new thing that you're doing, and every old thing that you're improving on, oh Lord. I pray, oh Lord, that you may bring the new people in, oh Lord, and move in their lives right now, oh Lord. Allow us to reach the gospel, oh Lord. Allow us to reach some, oh Lord, reach the lost, oh Lord. Father, we praise you, Lord. We thank you and we love you. Father, we also pray for our tithes and our offerings, oh Lord. May you bless the cheerful giver, oh Lord. May you open up the floodgates of heaven heaven, O oh Lord. May you pour out your blessings upon your church, O oh Lord. Father, we praise you, we thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. The church says, on your way back from giving tithes and offering, give your neighbor a hug and high five at least three people. Amen.
Our God is great. We praise His name. Worthy are You, Jesus. We worship You, God. We exalt You, Heavenly Father. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you, God. You are great. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him that God is great. So good to have each and every one of you here this afternoon, ready to worship the Lord and ready to hear from the voice of God. Uh, it's been a blessed week. Uh, as you see, we're, we're starting some new things here at the church, and um, uh, when you see, we're getting our young adults involved, and uh, Haas did a great job, amen? Amen. amen? amen. She's ready. She's ready to do her own show now. <laughs> so um, we're, we're doing a lot of different things, so you, we want you to be a part of this. We want you to get involved. We want you to get incorporated with what God is doing and, and with the young people's and young adults ministries, uh, get involved, man. 18 and up, 17, 18 and up, get involved and gonna be doing some some great things. So uh, know that God is, is is blessing and God is moving, and we need each and every one of you. We just got back from Phoenix and it was an awesome trip. Uh, God was good and even the weather was okay. Amen. And um, we didn't suffer as much. For them, it was cold. It was like 60 degrees, 58 degrees, and they had hats and gloves on. The people from who lived there, and I'm like in shorts, like, man, this is awesome. And they're out there freezing. I'm like, man, you just don't know. <laughs> you just don't know what, what we, where we come from. And, you know, sometimes that's with the Lord, too, when God has delivered you. And the reason why some people are crying and raising their hands and rejoicing during worship is not because they're sad. You just don't know what God has done for them. You just don't know how God has blessed them. You just don't know what God has delivered them from. And that's the reason why they rejoice and they cry. It's not because of sadness, but it's because of joy. And uh, we hope that you will get to know that joy. Uh, if you don't know him today, we pray that you get to know him today, that joy that God has for you. Amen? Amen. Uh, we're also going to be starting in prayer uh, and really uh, developing that with people are going to be up here praying. And, and um, so when you come into the sanctuary, uh, we want you to be respectful of that. So if you want to come in here and just sit and, and pray, that's fine. You want to just come here and sit, that's fine. If you want to talk and, and, and have a good time during the, the opening before we start that 15 minutes, head to the back. You can uh, talk and joke around and, and laugh and have a good time back there. But we want to create this atmosphere here in the sanctuary that begins our service. So if you're coming in and you want to have a laugh and a joke, head in the back. If you just want to sit down and quiet, uh, you, you can sit in your seat and pray. You come up here and pray. But we want to begin to change that. So we need your help. We need your help for that. So if the ushers tell you, hey, could you move back? Don't get all offended. Don't get all upset. Uh, just say, okay, no problem, because it's coming for me. So we want to begin to create that atmosphere. Amen? Amen? So I pray that you guys will be a part of the solution, not part of the problem. Amen. I want you to repeat after me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit have your way in my life. I give you freedom to move in this service. I need your gifts and your anointing in my life. Help me to minister to someone this week. Give me understanding as I read your word this week. Holy Spirit, open my mind, open my heart, and open my soul to hear the word of God today. Amen. We are starting a brand new series called Game Time. Everyone say Game Time. I want you all to take a look at this video.
me back then. <laughs> you know I had to do it. <laughs> we looked hard, too. <laughs> it was back in the Flintstone days, you know. <laughs> but maybe 2014 will be your year, amen? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's your brother say, I still love you. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about let's play to win. Let's play to win. And as a church, 2014 is game time for us. It's time for us to win. Amen? Amen. We've been challenged by the enemy, and we need to step up our game and play to win. And there are souls on the line, and we can't be afraid of the battle. With God on our side, we're guaranteed a victory. Amen? Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, we're going to win. Amen. Now, a scoreboard never lies. The scoreboard would never lie. At the end of the game, the scoreboard will tell you which team won and which team lost. But you know what the scoreboard doesn't tell you? It doesn't tell you the whole story. Let me share with you a true story. Uh, it took place in Yukon, Oklahoma. It was the first round of the three uh, A state basketball champ playoffs. Imagine this. They're in the first round basketball state championship playoffs. I'm going to show you some of my skills, huh? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Y'all don't want none of this. Back in the day, I was, they called me sweetness. Amen. <laughs> UConn, Oklahoma, 3A state basketball championship playoffs. Hugo had the ball with only three seconds left on the clock, like 3.8. And all they had to do was inbound the ball, let the clock run out, and they would win the game. And they would continue on in the state championship playoffs. Hugo passed the ball in to their star forward, their star forward, who caught the ball. And it looked like it was game time. It was over. And he looked up, and he saw that the basket was wide open. So he dribbled the ball, and he shot the ball into the basket, and he raised his hands in victory. But the only problem was he shot it into the wrong rim. <laughs> he won the game for the other team. I got a video of it. Check this out. A shocking end to a state basketball game in Yukon is making its way around the internet. It happened in last night's game between Hugo, a school in southern Oklahoma, and Millwood near Oklahoma City. Well, two news reporter Dan Perlman is here now to show us exactly what happened. Well, guys, this is the video right over here. We all know everyone wants to score the game winning shot. That's what happened here, but this time the ball went in to the wrong basket. Less than four seconds in the game, Hugo has a one-point lead. A jump ball gives them possession. Marcus' brother pulls out his phone. Well, I'm about to get something amazing. The ball is tossed inbounds. A Hugo player catches it. He drives. He scores in Millwood's basket. I couldn't believe you could do the game like this. That bucket meant Millwood would move on. Hugo's season was over. Got into a museum. Yes, a shot. Could you imagine that? That you scored the wrong basket? Some of you will probably never play sports. Probably, ah, oh, no big deal. But if you ever played sports on a team, especially in high school, how that poor kid felt that he thought he had the game won, but he scored it in the wrong basket. And this happened many of times. And in the NFL, it happened. It happened a bunch of times. And um, one time there was a man named Jim Marshall. He was a Pro Bowl defensive end with the Minnesota Vikings. And what happened was San Francisco fumbled the ball. And 
If you don't know what, how many of you don't know what a fumble is? <laughs> Let's start there, all right? We got some honest people. It's when the other team has the ball and they lose it. And see, amen, now, now we're all in the same place. How many know what NFL means? <laughs> Not for you, league, amen. <laughs> NFL, National Football League. He fumbles the ball, and Jim Marshall jumps in the pile. Because you ever see a fumble? They all jump for the ball. Everybody runs in, and they jump in, and um, they get the ball. So Jim Marshall, he's an all-pro defensive end. He gets in there and grabs the, f- the fumble, and he grabs the ball. And he's so happy, he sees the end zone with nobody in sight. So he takes off running, man. He's just running and running and running. And he doesn't look to the side or behind him. And he sees his, his teammates on the sideline and the teammates behind trying to flag him down, saying he's running the wrong way. And he goes into the end zone, thinks he scores a touchdown. He spikes the ball and he puts his hand in victory. And he wonders why nobody is cheering for him. He scored a safety for the San Francisco 49ers. He got into the wrong direction. Hey, that's pretty good. I think have you part of our New Life football team. Amen. Now, these guys, they didn't lose the game because of lack of effort. These players, the one on uh, on the basketball and and, um, the one on the football team were one of the best players on the team. They didn't lose the game because they weren't prepared. These guys were finely tuned athletes. They prepared. They gave 100% of what they had to the game. Because if you ever play sports, you know that you give it all. We just uh, put it all on the line. Even after you hit 40, amen. You still give it all you got, and then the next day you pay for it. Amen. So that wasn't the problem. It wasn't because of lack of effort. It wasn't because they didn't have the right skills. They were the best on their team. What happened was they got confused about direction. And they thought they were scoring points and helping their team to win when they looked up at the scoreboard and saw that they lost. The scoreboard never lies. Everyone say scoreboard. Scoreboard. The scoreboard never lies. See, most leaders of the church work very hard, just like yourselves. A lot of you guys are working hard in the ministry, and you're well prepared to do your ministry. But we get confused about our church scoreboard and how to know if we're winning and how to accomplish the mission of Jesus Christ. As leaders, sometimes we lack confidence and understanding How do we put points on the scoreboard and know for sure that our church, New Life, is winning and advancing the cause of Jesus Christ? See, in a game, we know how to keep score. You know, you know, in baseball, if you run around the the base pass there and you hit home plate, that's one run. You know, if you score a, a touchdown in football, that's six points. You know, if you score a goal in soccer, the announcer says, goal! And it's one point. You know how to keep score. You know, whether you play cards or whatever, you know how to keep score. But in church, how do you keep score? How do you know that you're winning and advancing the cause of Jesus Christ? Is it by the attendance? How many people come to church? Is it by offering? How big the offering is? Is it about how you impact the community? How do you keep score? How do you know if you're putting points on the scoreboard? Today, we're going to look at how to keep score in the church and how to win at our mission of reaching the loss. You see, it's always more fun to win. Everyone say win. Win. It's always more fun to win. And most of you know that when I play, I play to win. I don't care if it's my son, Nehemiah, and we're playing football, and and he's trying to tackle me. He better watch out because I'm coming hardcore. I don't care if he cries. Get up, boy. This is football, man. Any of you guys that played with me know that I played to win. We're playing spades. Guess what? I'm playing to win. Some of y'all think it's called cheating, but it's not. It's called winning. Amen. (laughs) I play to win. Doesn't matter what the game is, I play to win. You know, if it's football, 
I love football, man. I love basketball. And, and I play the win. Let's see how many of you guys are awake. Let me see Matt over there. Ooh, come on, Matt. I got to make sure. I got to wake him up. I play to win. That's what I do in sports. Because it's never fun to play any game and not keep score. How many of you guys ever played a game and say, let's just play for fun? Let's just play for fun. And uh, you start playing, say, spades. And you don't keep score of the points. About after the third round or so, you're like, man, this is boring. Because you just, yeah, let's play for funsies. You know, let's all feel good. You know, everybody's a winner. No, you're not. <laughs> Somebody's got to lose. <laughs> it ain't no fun. You got to keep points. How many play just for fun and never keep points? All right, we got a couple liars in the church, amen. <laughs> How many like to keep points? Oh, there we go. Now we got the truth coming out. Because it's just more fun. When you play a game of, of baseball, you don't just go out there and just say, it's just uh, play and, and who cares what the score is. You always keep score. Why? Because after a little bit, if you play and don't keep score, you get bored. You're going to want to quit. It's boring. You ever play Texas Hold'em and you don't have chips? It doesn't, it doesn't work. It's no fun. You know, it's fun to say, all in. If you've never done it, you got to try it just one time. When you got a stack of chips and the other person only got a little stack of chips and you're trying to, you know, intimidate them and you just roll that big stack of chips right there and you say, all in. It feels good. If you've never done it, try it. Just try it. Just get a big stack of chips and just roll it in. It's fun. But if you don't have the chips, guess what? Texas hold them after about two rounds, you're going to quit because it's no fun. You have to keep score. And the part of the reason we like winning is because winning equals success. But in the kingdom of God, winning doesn't always mean success. You see, in the world, winning means success. If you win, you have success. But in the kingdom of God, winning doesn't mean success. Doesn't necessarily mean you're successful. Now, follow me. So now what we need to do is we need to define winning according to the word of God. So let's look at what Jesus would say because, I mean, let's start with him. He should be the one that we should look at first. Jesus in Matthew chapter 20, verse 16, and then verses 26 through 28. The disciples were asking a question to Jesus, man, who's going to be the greatest Jesus? Jesus says, so the last will be what? Everyone say first. first. And the first shall be what? Last. That's what Jesus says at, at, at the beginning. This is how it is to be a winner. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your what? Servant. servant. So if you want to be great, you got to be a servant. Whoever wants to be first must be your what? Slave. Slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus tells us first that if you want to be successful in the kingdom of God, you got to be last. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor. You know, you remember that movie, Talligated Nights? If I'm not first, you're last. Everything wants to be first. But it's not about that in the kingdom of God. If you want to be first in the kingdom of God, you need to be last. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you got to be a servant, a slave. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. Man, this is not so good anymore. Well, let's look at what the Apostle Paul says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 to 29. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. You see, you would think that the world says, let's get the smartest people we can find, and we'll hire them. God says in the kingdom, let me find the most foolish people to find, and I want them. Totally backwards. Look at that. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. The business people tell you, man, you hire the strong, the alpha male dog. That's the one you hire. Jesus says, I want the weak one. I want the one in the corner all by himself and, and, and afraid of his own little shadow. That's the one I want. Totally opposite. Look at this. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not 
to nullify the things that are. Totally opposite of the world's thinking. Why? So that no one may boast before him. Because if you're the alpha dog, you're the strong, you're the best, when you do something for God, guess what? You're going to take the credit. Because you're like, I did this. Man, my knowledge did this. My strength did this. My wisdom did this. But when you're the low of the low, when you're the weak of the weak, and God says, I'm going to pick him, and then I bring him up or her up, and I do great and mighty things with that person, guess what? That person is going to say, it was no one but God. God is the only reason why that this has happened, because I know I am a nobody. Somebody praise the Lord. See, God is looking for the weak. God is looking for the foolish. God is looking for those that are not looking for the fame. Is there someone in this house that says, Lord, that's me. I'm the weak person, man. I'm the foolish person. I'm the person that is despised. And God, I want you to use me. I pray that you're that person. So success in the kingdom of God is totally different than what the world says it is. So, pastor, what does winning look like then in the kingdom of God? So if it's not being the best, if it's not being the strongest, if it's not being the wisest, if it's not scoring point, what does winning look like in the kingdom of God? If you read Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to see very clearly what winning looks like for us as men and women of God. God talks about in the beginning, you can read it at home, the beginning of Hebrews 11, Talks about heroes like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and the list goes on. And then this is what he says about these people that he lists in this, what we call the Hall of Fame of Faith. Hebrews 11, verse 33 to 38. Who through faith, everyone say faith, faith. conquered kingdoms, administrated justice, gained what was promised, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. You, you read that at first and you're like, man, that's awesome, man. That's great, man. That's just what I want to be. I want to shut mouths of lions. I want to do this. And that's how I'm going to be successful. But guess what? That's part of it. But look at what God says as he continues to read. Verse 36. Though some who still, that God says, are successful, some face jeers, some face flogging, even chains and imprisonment. Oh, wait a minute. This is not sounding so good now. This don't sound like what the world says is successful. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, mistreated. Oh, man, if that's what success is in God, man, uh, wait a minute. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains. They lived in caves and in holes in the ground. See, the Bible tells us about the ones who did great things from God, but it also tells about the ones who suffered greatly for the kingdom of God. But they're both in the scriptures here. So what's the key then? The key to success according to God. It's found in verse 39. Let's read it. Hebrews eleven thirty nine. 39. They were all, everyone say all. all. Commended for their what? Faith. For their faith. They were all commended for their faith. So in the kingdom of God, then what matters the most is faithfulness. It doesn't matter if we look successful in the world's eyes, but if we're faithful in the good times and in the bad times, then on God's scoreboard, we're going to win. You see, it doesn't matter how successful you are. We saw successful people who shut the, lion, the lion's mouth, who won great battles, but then we also found out about the people who were sawed in two, who lived in a cave, who lived in holes, who had... No clothes, they, lived, they had sheepskins as their clothes. In the world's eyes, they wouldn't be successful. But God says both those sides were successful. So it doesn't matter about success in the way the world tells you success is. God says, how are you going to score points on his scoreboard? 
is if you're faithful. In God's kingdom, we can have successful failures. Check that out. That's like an oxymoron. What do you mean, pastor? How can you have a successful failure? Follow me. Remember, success is not always winning, but being faithful. Success is not always winning, but being faithful. In the church, not every ministry, now follow me now, not every ministry we're going to do is going to work. But in every ministry we do, we need to be faithful. And if we are, then we will be successful every time. We will put points on the scoreboard. Every ministry, check that out. Every ministry we do here in this church is not going to work. But that's not what God is looking at. God is looking at, is the leader of that ministry faithful? No matter what, if you're the only one who shows up, if you say, I'm going to do this ministry, and then you call the time and say, it's going to be here at Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to meet here, we're going to do this ministry. And if you're the only one who shows up, that doesn't determine if you're successful or a failure. If 50 people show up, that doesn't mean you're successful. What God is looking at for you to put points on the scoreboard is are you faithful? Are you faithful when maybe for two weeks, four, four weeks, eight weeks, nobody shows up at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning, but you're there. And you open up the doors of the church and you're ready for your ministry. You come prepared and you're faithful and, and you're there every week. And, and after eight weeks, you come to me and say, Pastor, man, nobody's coming. And you say, you know what? We're going to have to shut down this ministry. It's just not going to work. That doesn't mean you're a failure. What it means is that you're faithful. And God says, guess what? You scored a touchdown on my scoreboard. You scored a home run on my scoreboard. You scored a goal on my scoreboard. But when you look at it and you believe the lies of the enemy and you believe what the world says is successful, you're going to think you're a failure. But in reality, God says you're successful because you're faithful. And if you're faithful with 50 or you're faithful with one, yourself, that's what God is looking at. He's not looking at who comes, who doesn't come. He's looking at are you faithful? See, as leaders, we're not playing for fun. There's too much at stake here with people's eternal lives in the balance depending on what we do. We're not playing for fun. As a church ministry, we're not out here for funsies. The Bible says, and I shared it with you before, that the violent take it by force. That we in the kingdom of God have suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Why is that? Because this is a spiritual battle. The enemy is coming and attacking us. The enemy is coming up against us. And if we're not faithful, we're going to be destroyed. God is looking for some faithful people. And like I share with you, you don't have to make every basket. With your basket, you don't have to make the winning shot. See, sometimes in the ministry, we think we got to always make a point. But guess what? Just you dribbling the ball there by yourself, being faithful to your ministry, God says you're scoring a point. In the world, they're saying, what are you doing? You're just dribbling the ball. You're not, you're not scoring the basket. See, in the kingdom of God, it's not about scoring the points. It's about are you going to be faithful with what you've been given? Now, this is a ministry This right here is a ministry. You see, Suli. That's good. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it there. That ball represents a ministry. And when I say, you know what? Just with Suli for right now is my example. Suli, I'm giving you this ministry. I'm handing you the ball. The ball represents the ministry. Now, in the world's eyes... When you're in the football game, the world expects you to score every time you touch that ball. And if you don't, you're not successful. But that's not what God says. God says, 
okay, you've been handed the ball. That's your ministry. Whatever you've been asked to do in the church, that's your ministry. Now, God is saying for you to be successful is, what are you going to do with that ball? If you just walk two yards forward and that's all you did, but you've been faithful with God and faithful to the ministry, God says, guess what? On my scoreboard, you just scored. Doesn't matter what anybody else does around you as long as you're faithful because that's the ministry that's been given to you. And even if we have to shut down the ministry because it just didn't work, you've had a successful failure in the eyes of God. And you scored points because why? Even when nobody came, guess what? You was there. You opened up the door. You was waiting for the people. You prepared. You studied. You did what you had to do. You was successful. You scored points in the eyes of God. And if we have to close it down, Zuli would just throw the ball back. Say, Pastor, I did the ministry. I was faithful. It just didn't work. No problem. And guess what? We cheer. Everyone cheer for Suli. <laughs> Why? Because she was successful. You don't look at her and say, oh, oh, man, she just messed up. She don't know what she's doing. No. That's what the world will tell you to think. But God tells you, hey, she was faithful. She would be on that list. They were commended for their what? Faith. Faith. Not their success. They weren't commended because they shut the lion's mouth. They weren't commended because they were sawed in two. They were commended because of their faith. So when you understand how to score, then you understand how to win. See, when any game you play, if you don't know the rules, guess what? You're never going to win. You will try different things, and you're going to get called for fouls. If you didn't know in basketball that in order to move the ball, you got to dribble, that you can't just walk like this. This is called what? Traveling. Traveling. And guess what? The ref blows the whistle, takes the ball from you. Same thing in the kingdom of God. If you don't know the rules and how to score, the devil is going to call foul on you. And he has every right because he knows the rules. But when you know the rules that all I do, all I need to do is be faithful, and I'm going to score, guess what? You're going to win every time, and you're going to feel great about yourself every time, no matter what, in the eyes of man, that you're successful or not, you're successful in God's eyes because you're faithful. So in this ministry here, we don't count success by how many people are in the seats. We count success of how many people who are here are faithful. You see, now there becomes a difference in your thinking. You're not, you're not worried about, well, of course we want to win more souls and we want to grow bigger. That's all part of it. But you don't count success, that the ministry is successful just because it's full. Because I can have a church full of people, but they're not faithful. God's just looking, you're just having a big social club who's having a good time and loves music. Anybody can create that. We need to create an environment of people that are faithful. And guess what? When we're faithful, it's going to reproduce and grow too. That's just a natural byproduct. But that's not how we count if we're successful. So we look at each service. We don't count if we're successful in the service by how many people are in the seat. We count how many people are in the seat who are faithful. And when they're faithful, guess what? We put a point up. We scored a goal. They came on Sunday morning in the snow. No matter what, there's a point. We were successful. Man, we're scoring points, and we rejoice, and we praise God. Because every time someone scores a point, if you ever been to a game, what do people do? Cheer. They cheer, right? They, you never, I've never been to a game where people scoring points and people are just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the people who don't care about the game, they sit there and, or don't understand the game, they sit there and play on their iPads and iPhones and look at their cell phones because they don't care. They don't care anything about the game. But the people who understand the game, 
Some of you are like, that's me. I don't care about games. I'll go to football, baseball games, and I'll, I'll pay 50 bucks just to sit in the stands to play on my phone. Well, amen. And Well, you can take me. I'll, I'll be right with you watching the game, telling you what's going on. I love the game. But people who love the game, understand the game, every time their team scores, they go crazy. <laughs> oh, man, my team scored, man. They, they act a fool. So why isn't it when you come to church? And your teammate scores a point. You just sit there. Yeah, well, quiet as can be. You can just hear crickets. Because don't it feel good? You ever been to a playoff game and your team wins? Man, you're hugging strangers, ain't you? You don't care who they are. You're like, oh, man, we won, we won. And you're like, who is this dude hugging me? You don't care, do you? You're just hugging away, laughing and screaming. And we know here in Chicago, when the Bulls won, guess what, man? Everybody, it was mad chaos. Everybody's on top of their cars, honking their horn. They're out there cheering with their flags, and they're going out crazy. And strangers, they're all jumping on everybody's car. You don't even know whose car you're at. You're just like, who's, I don't know, the drive. I'm just here. Ah, man, we're having a great time. But why is it in church then? When we score, we're just like, okay. My teammate scored. Okay. My teammate's faithful. Okay. You see the difference? Man, when, you're, when you leave that game, man, that you just won, man, you're so pumped up, man. You're just so much adrenaline inside of you. That's the same way you should leave this church. Because why? You've seen so many of your friends that have come to church that scored a point during the week. Man, and you're just so glad to see them, and you're hugging them. They're coming through the door, and you're hugging them right as soon as they hit through the door, and they're like, man, what's going on? Why are you hugging me? Oh, man, because you scored a point. You're faithful. You're awesome. You know how much different this atmosphere of this church will be if we start celebrating the points? Because now you know how to score a point. So... As we move forward in 2014, I want you to understand that. I want to begin to create that atmosphere of rejoicing when we score points. And I'm going to end with this. There was a story that Jesus told about a master who had three servants. He called the servants in, and he said, Here's some money. Gave someone 10 talents. Gave another servant five talents. Gave another servant one talent. He says, go out, invest. I'll come back someday, and I want a return on my investment. So he left. And the Bible said one day, the servants didn't know, but he came back. And two out of the three had a return on their investment. The one at, who had 10, he doubled it. The one who had five, he also doubled it. Gave him back 10. One, first one gave him 20. The third one who only had one, he hid his talent. And when the master came back, he just gave him back that same one. And this is what the master said to the ones who invested their talent and received double. Didn't, amount, didn't matter that this one gave him back 20 and this one only gave him back 10. That didn't matter to the master. This is what the master said to them, both. The same thing. If you read the story, I'm just going to read this. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. It says this. His master replied, well done, good, and what? Faithful servant. There's the key. Once again, how you score points? Faithful. The servant was faithful. He says, you've been faithful and a few things. Now I'm going to put you in charge of many things. Now he tells him, come and share your master's happiness. So master's celebrating with him. He's sharing with them. He's rejoicing, just like at the game. We scored the point. Oh, my God. I don't care that you only gave me back 10. I don't care that you gave me back more than 20. I have you in the same realm. Why? Because you both were what? Faithful. Faithful. So now come and rejoice and we'll have a good time and we'll party. The one who didn't, who wasn't faithful, you can read it at your house. He says, get out of here, you wicked servant, because you wasn't faithful. God is looking for faithful servants. Today, 
You don't have to be successful, only faithful. Let's all stand up. God is looking for faithful servants. Faithful servants. Close your eyes with me. Will you be one of those faithful servants? And, and I'm going to show you a video next week. And I know uh, uh, Pito has been trying to start this out. And they do it in Phoenix where I was at. And I'm going to show you the video when we, next week of when you come into their church, they have a line of people, just like you do at a game. They have a line of people lined up on both sides. And they come in and they high five you as you're coming in, pumping you up for the service. Guess what? When you went through that line, you felt great. My brother, uh, you guys know him, Junior, he went with me, never experienced that before. He went through there, man. After he went through it, I recorded him. He's smiling and laughing because you, you can't help yourself but to do that because everybody's saying, Great job, man. You're awesome. Good job. You're scoring a point. You're faithful. You're here at church. Instead of you walk through the door, nobody's there. You kind of look around and, you know, am, am, am I supposed to be here right now? Nobody comes up to you, says, man, great job. You scored a point. Because if you ever played in a sports league, every time someone scores a point, they slap you around, they slap you on the butt, they give you a high five. Somebody, one of your teammates does something to you. Because they're excited that you scored. Watch an NBA game, watch NFL. Anytime someone scores, they rejoice. They, they look at each other. They have a look. But at church, we've lost that. Because we just don't know what a point was. So now that we understand how to put points on the scoreboard, I want to begin to change the atmosphere in this sanctuary. That's why you're seeing the prayer there. It's changing the atmosphere. But it needs to start from once that door opens. You ain't got to know what Revelation has to say. You don't have to know what John, the book of John. You don't even have to know where the book of John is. All you got to do is raise your hand and high five people as they're coming through the door. That's all you got to do. You're like, Pastor, I need to do a ministry, but I don't know the Bible. Guess what? You ain't got to know the Bible. You ain't got to know prophecy. You ain't got to know nothing. All you got to know is how to raise your hand and, and make sure you slap their hand and not their forehead. Amen. That's all you got to know. And you can be a part of this, and guess what? You're going to change the atmosphere of this service. You're going to change it. But guess what? You got to come early. You ever played sports? And you came late to the game? Guess what? The coach don't put you in. And if you come late too many times, you get kicked off. So all you got to do is be faithful. That's what God is asking of us. Be faithful. So I, he's been asking for a few weeks and, and it just nothing has happened with this. But I want this to take place. You're going to see something so simple how much of an impact it's going to have. Something so easy. And even for now, it's just us high-fiving each other as we're coming through the door. That's fine. But as we invite people and guests coming through, they're going to say, man, this is different. This ain't just a normal church. Man, I felt good just coming through here. Because you're just pumping them up as they're going through the line. Like I said, next week, be prepared. I'm going to show you the video that I took of us going through there. Those of you who are watching on the internet, you say, Pastor, I want to be faithful. Raise your hand. I want to pray with you. I can't see you, but God can. Now, those here in the sanctuary, you say, Pastor Rob, I want to score points. And not only do I want to score points, I want to rejoice with my brothers and sisters who score points. Now I understand how we put points up on New Life Pilsen scoreboard. Faithfulness whether they're successful in their ministry or not. If they've been faithful, 
If they're there and they show up, man, they're faithful. And they study and they do what they're asked to do. They're faithful regardless if we got to shut it down. We rejoice with them because they're faithful. They had a successful failure. When people will start walking through this door, we want to congratulate them. Show them how successful they are for just coming in. If that's you here today, you say, Pastor, it's game time. I want to be faithful. And if you want to be part of that team too, after service, you talk to Pito and say, hey, I want to be part of that. And we'll start organizing that. It doesn't take very much to organize to make two lines of two to three people on each side. Very simple. But if you want to be faithful, you want to put points on the scoreboard for this church, and you want to celebrate the faithfulness of your brothers and sisters next to you, I want you to just get up out of your seat, find a place at this altar, and say, God, I want to be faithful. I want to be the one who's faithful. So that's you. Just make your way. Father, we worship you, God. God, that is not about what the world says is success, but it's what about you say success is, and that's faithfulness. God, we want to be faithful. God, we want to be faithful. We want to be faithful, God. We want to put points on the scoreboard and be faithful. Faithful. That's all God is looking for. He's not looking for smart people. He's not looking for strong people. He's not looking for the best, the most famous. All he's looking for is faithful people. Matter of fact, if you're weak, you don't have much knowledge, you're the perfect candidate. That's who God's looking for. He's looking for you. He's looking for me. That's why you don't see too many famous people who are Christian. It's because they, they have their fame already. They don't need God. And it's hard for God to use them. Because everything goes through their head. See, God is looking for a nobody. Like me like you when he called me I was a nobody I was the youngest of my brothers I was the youngest of seven brothers had nothing special about me I wasn't famous I couldn't do anything the greatest I wasn't in college sports I was just average but God says that's who I want I want the weak I want someone like Rob not the smartest, not the greatest, not the best. And I understand that. And it's okay because that's who God wants. God is, that's who God is going to use. And all I have to do is be faithful. And I'm successful in all that I do. And all you have to do is be faithful and you'll be successful in all that you do. Jesus, you're looking for faithful people. You're looking for faithful people. You're looking for faithful people. You're not looking for the best preacher in the world. You're not looking for the best prophet in the world. You're not looking for the, the best theologian in the world. You're just looking for faithful men and women of God. God, I pray that you find faithful men and women of God here at New Life that you find faithful women and men of God, that you say, those is what I call a success. That's a success story. They opened up a ministry with two people and kept faithful with that. They took persecution. They were faithful. They shut lion's mouth. They were faithful. They were flogged, whipped, made fun of. They were faithful. They won great victories, but yet they still were faithful to you. The outcome of the event has no bearing on God. God is only looking at faithfulness. God is only looking at faithfulness. God is only looking for faithfulness. Faithfulness. 
Are you faithful with what's been given to you? Are you faithful in what's been given to you? Faithful. 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 Whether they had the victory or whether they died in defeat, God says, are you faithful? Well done, good and faithful servant. Faithful servant. God is looking for a faithful servant. Will you answer the call of that faithfulness? Faithful. 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 Are you faithful to God? Faithful. That's the key word. Let that ring in your spirit. Faithful. Faithful. You score points by being faithful. the children ministry faithful with the youth ministry faithful with the worship ministry faithful with the video ministry faithful with the ushering ministry faithful with safe haven ministry Faithful with the kitchen ministry. Faithful with the audio ministry. Faithful with what's been given to you. faithful count me as one who is faithful faithful with what has been given to you don't look at what's been given to somebody else be faithful with what has been given to you Don't look at the other servant who has 10 talents. Don't look at the other servant who has one talent. God has given to you a certain amount of talent. Be faithful with what's been given to you. Whether it's 10, 6, 3, or 1, you be faithful with what's been given to you. Faithful. 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 Faithful God. You are faithful, Lord.
Let me have let me have the lights come on. Let me have three people on one side, three people on the other. Give me six people up here at this altar. Three here, three there. Face each other. We're gonna we're gonna make a little roll here. Three straight. Pito knows what to do. Set him up, Pito. Look closer, closer, closer. Pito, Pito, get him. Now, here's what I want. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how good this feels as you go through this line that's right here. Give me some people to line up behind Rosie here. Give me some people to line up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, come this way. Rosie, come this way so the people can see. Come on, line up, line up. Come this way. And then you guys, you're going you're gonna to high-five them. You're going you're gonna to say, man, you're an awesome. You did a great job. And you're going to see how good this feels. Who else wants to be part of it? Just, you don't, just come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Here we go. I want you guys to start clapping your hands. Come on, let's go, 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 go. Let's go, let's go. You, you see everyone's face, they're smiling, they're laughing, they're having a good time. Why? Because they're faithful. Imagine every Sunday, as you walk through those doors, this is the greeting you get. Oh my, you, you would see how quick and how fast this place is going to explode. Just from little things, because why? We're, we're celebrating faithfulness. We're celebrating faithfulness. Just like any team who starts winning, guess what? They get bandwagon fans from everywhere. All of a sudden, when, uh, you know, New England started winning, everybody's a Tom Brady fan. Everybody loves them. You know, we had a guy on the north side, whoever used to win, he would have the hat of that team. And you could tell that he was a bandwagon. Why? Because the hat was always brand new. Every time the team went, oh, man, I'm a Miami Hurricane fan from way back. No, you're not. They just started winning. And now you got that. Because people want to be a part of success. So as you felt that right there, imagine that every Sunday coming through that door, this is how you feel when you walk through. Man, awesome. Awesome, man. You saw every, nobody was sad as they walked through there. They was happy, man. Doesn't matter what went through their day throughout this day right now, no matter what happened. When they went through, they was happy, man. They, they ended up smiling because why? Just six people who had, don't know anything. You don't have to know anything about scripture. Gotta, gotta be super spiritual. All you gotta do is just high five them and make them feel good. We're going to celebrate faithfulness in this church. So we're, we're going to be changing things up. So I need you guys to be a part of this. So talk with, with Pito after the service. Just say, hey, I'll do that. That's, and all you got to do is, guess what? Is be faithful. Show up. Show up early. Show up early. And that's all you got to do. Amen? Amen? Grab your neighbor's hand. The Bible says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. And may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>